Okay, let's look at the second one here. So this is the block sliding down the ramp. I do think we spent some time on this one in class, but I'll run back through it. Um, so again, like I said before, um, really you've got three problems in one. You've got a conservation of mechanical energy problem, and then you have a conservation of momentum problem, and then afterwards, over here, you've got a, a work mechanical energy theorem problem. So nice, again, a nice review, kind of ties it all together. So um, part one says determine the height of the ramp. So just determine the height of the ramp. We don't really care about this other block here. We just know that there is some amount of gravitational potential energy up there, and all of that is going to be converted into kinetic energy down there. So that means we want to express that um, the mgh at the top must be equal to the 1 half mv squared at the bottom, but let's make sure we're putting in the right terms. It says that it's moving at some speed that's 3.5 times whatever this variable v initial is. That could be anything. It's just putting all of the speeds in the problem in terms of one variable. Um, our mass will cancel out here, so that gives us v is the square root of 2gh. Um, hold on, let's back it up. Solving for the wrong thing. We're solving for h here. So h is the um, equal to v squared over 2g. Let's put in the right v. So 3.5 v initial squared over 2g. And I'd be okay with that rather than squaring out the 3.5 and divided by 2. But you certainly could reduce this a little bit more um, than what we have there. But that's essentially the derivation for h. We can't solve this. We can just derive it in terms of what's given. Um, which is V initial, H, and, and then G, the constant. Now, part two says determine the speed of the block after the collision. So what we do know now is, let's draw this out. We do know that the big block, when it gets to the bottom, um, this is block M, and it's traveling at 3.5 V initial. It strikes another block M that is at rest. And then it says, as a result of this, we have... This block, M, travels off at 2V initial, and then the first block, M, we're not really sure what happens with that, so that's why we need conservation of momentum. So we do know that the momentum over here does have to equal the momentum over here. Um, so that means 3.5 MV initial. And again, don't forget, I mean, this 3.5 is just a coefficient, so I can bring it out to the front of this term, even though it's times the velocity. Plus 0 has to equal big M times V. I'm going to put a final in there so that we know that we're solving something different there. Plus 2 MV initial. Uh, we're dealing with the same mass all the way through. And don't call them M1 and M2 if they're both the same. So in a problem where they put the masses in terms of a single variable, like M, it could be M and 2M or 3M and 4M or whatever, um, that enables us to cancel out that M. If you put M1 and M2, now you're really calling them two totally different variables. So that means 3.5 V initial minus 2 V initial has to equal the final, which comes out to be 1.5 the initial, and it also has to be positive, right? So we know that it has to be to the right. So this guy has to be moving in that direction too. Okay, so there's my conservation of momentum part. Part 3 says the larger block slides a distance d before coming to rest. So we know that this block, m, which started out traveling at 2, the initial is going to travel some distance d um, before it gets over here 
and its velocity is zero. And then we know that there's friction there. And um, we'll try to find that coefficient of friction. So this is, again, is a, a classic way that we can use conservation of mechanical energy and the work energy theorem. So all of the energy is lost. So we know that the work, the negative work done by friction has to be equal to the change in K of that block. That's why it's negative, because K is getting smaller. Um, so that means um, force of friction, so mu times M times G times D, right? Force times distance equals work equals negative one half m to the initial squared. Let's work all that out. So two two squared is four. Half of that is that. So that's negative two m v initial squared um, over m g d equals mu. Cancel that out. So mu. Um, is equal to 2v initial squared over g d. Um, both sides of these equations are negative, by the way, so that negative cancels out. Mu is never going to be negative. It's a coefficient. doesn't have units or direction. Okay. Uh, and then indicate whether the collision is elastic or inelastic. Remember we talked about that? Elastic means um, kinetic energy initial equals kinetic en energy final. Inelastic means that the kinetic energy initial does not equal final. Uh, typically means the final is going to be less as well. So the only way we can figure this out is to simply solve it out. So calculate the kinetic energy before. So if we remember back, our first block had a um, speed of 3.5 squared. Second block was at rest, so that constitutes the total kinetic energy before. And the kinetic energy after, we had 1 half M um, 1.5 the initial squared plus one half M times two the initial squared. Um, probably need to work this out a little bit more. So this would be we already said this. This is four. This is. 2mv initial squared, um, 1.5 times 1.5 is 2.25, half of that is 1 point, yeah, 2.25, so call that 1.12. So my total momentum afterward is around 3.1 mv initial squared. So the total momentum before we know is going to be greater than that because 3.5 times 3.5 is somewhere around 10. So this is going to be somewhere probably in the neighborhood of 5 mv initial squared. So these two momenta do not, or sorry, kinetic energies do not equal each other. So that must be an inelastic collision. And again, solving it out in some way, showing that you know how to figure it out is really the only way to justify that.